morning and welcome to St. Baldrick's Shave the Brave event in the kingdom of St. Baldrick's. I'm your MC, Jesse Tamplin. I'm the director of operational excellence and deployment here at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. And it's my privilege to be hosting this event. Today we are airing from UCSF Benioff Children's uh, Hospital where our doctors and nurses, myself and my son, will be shaving in honor of children and teens with cancer to bring awareness and raise money for critical pediatric cancer research. We are so pleased to have people watching virtually today. And we have nine brave shavees. We also know many people have already shaved who supported this event. And we have photos and videos for them that are inspiring that I'm looking forward to sharing with you all later in the program. Thank you all for your continued support and being, uh, and being involved despite the physical distancing orders that led to this event becoming virtual. I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Carolyn Hastings. Dr. Hastings is a pediatric oncologist here at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, Oakland, and she's been a volunteer for St. Baldrick's for 15 years. Her and her family helped bring the Brave the Shave event to Oakland 13 years ago, and to date has raised over $2.3 million for the St. Baldrick's Foundation and, and creating funding for critical pediatric cancer research. On behalf of the St. Baldrick's Foundation, it is my honor to present Dr. Hastings, her colleagues, and the community this plaque of appreciation for all of their hard work in supporting um, St. Baldrick's and we have, an in, we have an individual medal for Dr. Hastings for continuing to be a top contributor in fundraising for pediatric uh, cancer research for uh, St. Baldrick's. Thank you so much, you, uh, Dr. Hastings. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, and all of you who are joining us today. And I know that many of you have shaved and are continuing to be part of this event, and we really thank you and, and miss you and hope to see you next year when we host our 14th, I hope, in-person event. So I'd, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about why we're doing this. Uh, as many of you know, cancer is a rare disease in children, and probably only 1% to 2% of all cancers are in kids and teenagers. However, we lack insufficient research funds far less than that 2%, and we need that in order to promote and develop more treatments and cures for children with cancer. And like many good ideas, the idea of St. Baldrick's was inspired over a bet at a bar in 1999. People uh, challenged each other to shave their heads in solidarity for kids with cancer and to raise money and awareness. And in 2004, out of that idea, the St. Baldrick's Foundation was created. So now this is the 16th year. And to date, the St. Baldrick's Foundation has raised over $250 million, and all of this money has gone solely to support research for children and teenagers with cancer. And because of this money and research, we've seen amazing improvements in outcomes with more kids surviving and more kids having improved quality of life. So thank you. Every dollar that you contribute makes a significant difference, and this has been an event that's now being held virtually across the country, and we hope to continue the momentum. So thank you very much. Also, I want to give a shout out to our um, Oakland Police Department that we're planning on shaving live virtually with us at the station, but given current events are unable to join us at this moment. However, they have a team and they're continuing to raise funds and we'll be shaving at another event. As of this morning, our event has raised over $91,000. We're aiming for $100,000. We'd certainly like to see higher than that. So we're counting on your support. And we're going to hear more about our top uh, fundraisers from Jesse. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Hastings. <laughs> and what are those incredible numbers that St. Baldrick's has been doing to raise money for pediatric cancer? Truly inspiring. I also would like to introduce some inspiring individuals who are individual shavees and teams who've raised the most money for this year. So our top individual fundraising shavees are Jeff Chung, who raised over $10,000, Carolyn Craner, who raised over $5,000, Petra Syme, who raised over $4,000, and Cooper Boyd, who raised 
over $4,000. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> also, we have seven individual Chevys who've raised over $2,000. That is Mary Joan Toach, Vala Barnett, Jenny Lynn Martino, David Pearson, Samuel Dalton, Anu Agawal, and James Stollard. Let's give them a round of a hand. <laughs> Our top grossing team this year is from Sem Boys Fam, who raised $6,860. What an incredible collective effort. <laughs> Dr. Hastings has this trophy that we will be sending them in the mail, and I'm just so inspired uh, by the hashtag, Defy Child cancers. This is what we're here for today, and I can't wait till this team gets this trophy. We also have some other teams that we would like to recognize. First is the longtime support from Go Ruck NorCal, who raised $6,307. Oakland Fire Department, who raised $6,268. UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland's residents, attending physicians, and friends raised $5,139 and the Oakland Police Department raised $3,418. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I can't wait to see what these teams do next year, and I challenge all of you out there to put together a team for next year and see if you can beat these numbers. Let's get you up on the leaderboard for next year. And as Dr. Hastings says, it's still not too late to contribute this year. Let's see if we can get that $100,000 goal that Dr. Hastings challenges us to hit. Now it's time to see some individual Chevys who can't be here due to physical distancing and watch what they did for us. years old and I'll be shaving my head for childhood cancer research. About four years ago, I went with the Peter Pan Foundation as a character to St. Baldrick's for the first time. And there I saw people of all ages shaving their heads for cancer research. Seven years ago, I was in the hospital for a very long time and it was because of the medical research that I was able to get better. I'm not nervous about the actual shaving of my head. I'm more nervous about the outcome, but I know even now the feeling of it, it's kind of free, it makes me feel free, and honestly kind of a little powerful. Being in junior high, I might get some weird looks, but I know it's for a good cause world crazy as it is right now, I just want to do my part with helping these kids in. What an inspiring video and pictures. Thank you all of those individual Chevys who made those pictures and sent them in to us. Deeply appreciated. Right now, we are in our first live Shave the Brave event. And here we have our team of UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital nurses, led by Chuck Lika, who is here to shave in person. One of their team members, Carrie, is not able to join today, but we are grateful for her partition, participation on the team. These nurses have raised over $2,000 and one of our top fundraising team. Let's give them a round of applause. So let's start the shave. Dr. Hastings, would you like to interview some I of will. our shavies? I'm ready. Should have a cape. Oh, let's put a cape on. Make you look like a cape crusader. <laughs> <laughs> so Chuck, you're also going to be knighted today. So you have been doing this for seven years, and I know that you spend a lot of your time working on the ward with in the oncology patients. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why this has become important to you too? Uh, hi, my name is Chuck Lessa, uh, Five South RN. Uh, this is actually my tenth year. Ah, what am I saying? I know I get to become <laughs> a commander this year. 
And uh, the reason why I do this is for all those courageous, amazing children who fight all the time and they deserve to have someone in their corner. And that's, that's us, that's the doctors, researchers, there's a ton of people in those teams. Uh, we do what we can, the best we can, to get the best outcomes that we can for the kids. And, and what, does it, what does it mean to the kids, do you think, when you show up bald? Are you working today? I uh, am working today. <laughs> It's going to be about a 14-hour day. <laughs> um, so when this first started, uh, I did, uh, before the hospital officially got involved, I did a little impromptu shave on one of the uh, playrooms, Five South, and had the kids and their parents and whoever wanted to have a swipe at me come <laughs> shave my head. It went over really well. We had a lot of fun. And the last kid was a kid who was on isolation who could come out of his room. And I asked everyone to save a piece for him. And we went into his room at the very end and let him finish me off and shave that last little piece on my head. And when he got finished, he said to me, now we're bald brothers. And that's wow. what I was going for, to bridge that gap between how the nurses look when we come in and how the children are, you know, with their, with their bald heads. I wanted to have that, that common bond with them. And uh, man, after that, I was hooked. I was in. So... Um, he meant a lot to me, and uh, we have a lot of other kids that need our help and support, so please give if you can. I know times are tough right now, but really, everything helps. Even if it's a dollar, it helps. So please give. Thank you. All right. I'd like to pass the mic to Michael, who has an interesting head tattoo that you guys might get to see. Oh, there you go. I think it would be awesome, Michael, if you could hold up or if we could hold up all oh, the yeah. uh, braids. That just got cut off your head. Look at how Michael set up his hair, everyone. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> oh, man. And we hear we're going to see a head tattoo? Oh, yeah. There's a, my, so my mom, had, she knows about it, but she hasn't seen it yet. Um, there, mom, do you, you're going to see it. It's going to deba debut for the first time right here. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a there's a Irish inspired uh, tattoo on the side of my head. It's like a series of concentric circles and motifs. And uh, in Irish mythology, Angus Og is the uh, god of love, poetry, and the protector of the young. Um, and so the first time I shaved my head for St. Baldrick's, um, I I got that tattoo shortly after, um, and it was my uh, my uh, pediatric oncology nurse signifying tattoo. And uh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. How long has it been since you've seen it? Uh, two plus years, about two, <laughs> two, a little more than two years, I think. OK. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that with that, that us today. I'm sure we're going to want to get a picture for everybody out in the virtual land to be able to see it. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Okay. And pass the mic over to Hannah here. Hello, Hannah. How are you doing today? I'm doing OK. Thank you for shaving. What's making you shave today? Um, for me, it's all about our patients, seeing what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's just a, a physical representation and just support. It's all about support for them. And it really means it's just so important. It's kind of really hard to describe when they see you for the first time. And they're like so happy and they're smiling. And they're like, you look, that just means so much to them. And it's really great that you know, that we can bring light to the awareness for the need for more research funds for cancer research. Thank you so much. Thanks. Armin. Good morning. Good morning. What brought you out to shave today? Um, <laughs> this is the tough part about going at the end. Yeah. So many good reasons that I wanted to say the same thing. Um, I can tell you that I started with St. Baldrick's much the same way St. Baldrick's itself started in an Irish pub um, on the day <laughs> of the event. And someone said, oh, yes, this is St. Baldrick's. This is what it is, et cetera. This is before I became a nurse. And so I started Facebooking all of my friends and raising money for um, cancer research. And within hours, uh, I had raised a pretty decent amount of money and off went my hair. Um, I don't know if you got to see the beginning actually grew my hair out for this. It was almost your length. Um, and, <laughs> and that's what, it's, it's fun. Um, I, I love this. I love going to the floor and um, kneeling down with a patient. And we both have, 
nice clean heads and we look at each other and it's just a really special moment. That's what keeps me coming back. No, that's so powerful and I've heard so many parts of your guys' story about the impact of having the kids uh, seeing that their caregivers also have um, a, a shaved head and a bald head to support them in unity. So uh, thank you so much for everybody of what you're doing and shaving today. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you're getting there. I think you should leave that part. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should zoom in and Michael here. Should oh, we should we leave it like to this? See the circles too. And, yeah. And then we got Chuck. That's a good looking haircut, Chuck. Thank you. I like it. So Karen is an expert dog groomer. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It's like riding a bicycle. Oh. Wow. You guys look incredible. Uh, incredible. Does it feel lighter? Well, actually, I, I bet you it's going to feel lighter for Michael. I'm gripping the, I'm holding on to the seat so I don't float away. <laughs> so we know Chuck's working after this. Who else, is anybody else going uh, into the hospital and working as well, too? Armin, uh, you're going back to work after this. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. And thank you all for coming out here on a Saturday to support the St. Uh, Baldrick's. No worries. Thank you as well. Putting this event together, Dr. Hastings does a fantastic job every year. Well, we're a team and we're a growing team. And, uh, and I think one of the most impressive parts of this event and the reason that we hold it here at Children's Hospital Oakland is because every person that works at this hospital is so committed and we have our doctors and nurses, but we also have people that work in our lab and in our environmental services and in our food services and engineering. And lots of people have come to participate and they all really care about what they do and mm -hmm. why they come to work every day. And I think this just adds a little bit more meaning to their days. Oh, you can definitely always tell when it's March from all the bald heads in the hospital. A lot of bald heads. Yeah. Yes. And, and also, you know, our community supporters and our first responders have been a very big part of this event. And we appreciate that, too. We've had um, lots of local fire departments and police departments. And one year we had our canine unit, although we didn't shave the dog, of course. And, we've, and our Coast Guard and our EMTs. So it's really, it's definitely a very community-driven program, and I know that our patients and the families are, are just humbled by that. And so thank all of you and oh, for being here and, and for doing this. We're absolutely proud to be here, to be a part of this amazing uh, event. All now, right. Where, I we, think Michael. Is he ready for the reveal? You're almost done. Are you ready for the reveal? Almost. Yeah, we, we have some mirrors, too, where everybody can take a look and see what they look yeah. like. So as our nurses start uh, finishing up, we will make sure to get a picture of Michael's tattoo to show all of us and, of course, his mother. But there's also a special story that we want to share with all of you um, today. Our top individual Chevy contributor, Jeff Chung, we would like to acknowledge him. He raised $10,429 and six cents. An amazing job as an individual Woo! contributor. We will be showing a video that Jeff and his family put together. Theirs is a very special story that I would like to share with you. Jeff and his wife, Roseanne, brought their infant daughter, Laura, to Children's Hospital Oakland over 30 years ago for the treatment of cancer. Laura ended, endured many therapies that had major impacts on her health. Laura survived that time after surgeries and chemotherapy, but sadly passed away as a young adult, likely related to the many effects of her cancer and treatment. We are fortunate for the advances in cancer research and treatments that would have made Laura's story different had she been diagnosed today, much to the work that St. Baldrick's does. Despite Jeff and Roseanne's busy life with careers and children, they became lifelong volunteers 
at the hospital, with Jeff serving over 35 years on the board of directors and Roseanne volunteering as a community representative on the ethics committee and the institutional review board that reviews research activities involving children. They also started the family house that allowed families from far away to come and stay at the hospital to support and be with their children and love them while they receive care at Children's Hospital Oakland. Jeff is not able to be here due to the social distancing restrictions, but his family shaved them in their backyard, and I'm happy to share this video with you all. Now batting, outstanding, six feet tall, hailing out of Chicago, Illinois, Jeff Gungi Cho! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name's Jeff Chung and I'm having my head shaved today for the St. Baldrick's Foundation. St. Baldrick's wants to start a campaign to defy pediatric cancer. So they're fundraising for the research. Today, my shaver is my wife, Roseanne Chung. And welcome back, and now for a very special part of our uh, event today, in which we honor our legendary heroes of the Bald Table. These are individuals who've committed many years of service to St. Baldrick's. And we have uh, Sir Cyrus, who will be knighting our newly minted knights. We will have our squires, who have donated or have been volunteering for three years, either as being shaved or as uh, an event um, organizer and volunteer, and our Knights of the Bold Table, who have given seven years, Knight Commanders at 10 years, and a Crusader at 15 years. So we welcome them to come on, and Sir Cyrus, you'll be bringing your magic sword and making this official. And I will read the St. Baldrick's Proclamation of Knighthood for the Kingdom of St. Baldrick's. League of legendary heroes, knights of the bald table. Be it known throughout the realm of St. Baldrick's that certain special volunteers have given years of their love, time, talent, treasure, and sometimes their hair to make life-saving research possible. And in recognition, the following noble ladies and gentlemen are henceforth and forever known as members of the most honorable league of legendary heroes. We have four honorees advancing in their knighthood today in the kingdom of St. Baldrick's. For three years of service to the kingdom of St. Baldrick's and advancing to the level of Squire of Hope is Armin Charmaine. Please come and get knighted, Armin. <laughs> Thank you, Sir around? Cyrus. Rise, Squire Armin. For seven years of service to the kingdom of St. Baldrick's and advancing to the level of Knight of the Bald, how appropriate today for Hannah Peltier. Please step up and get knighted. Rise, Knight Hannah. Thank you for your service. For 10 years of service to the Kingdom of St. Baldrick's and advancing to the level of Knight Commander, we have a new Agual. Please step forward and be knighted. Please. 
please rise. Thank you for your service. Chuck Lika, please step forward for your 10 years of service to the Kingdom of St. Baldrick and advancing to the level of Knight Commander. Please rise, Sir Chuck. And we have a very special individual who's rising to the level of Crusader. So please welcome Carolyn Hastings for 15 years of service to the Kingdom of St. Baldrick and advancing to the level of Crusader. Please rise, Sir Carolyn. Thank you all for being here in person to be knighted. Due to social distancing, we have other knights far and wide who are advancing in their knighthood. And we put together this presentation to honor them and their levels of knighthood. So these individuals are advancing to Squire and Squire of Hope. We will be recognizing them individually. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Bonita. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, David. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Gopal. Now, for seven years of service and rising to the level of the Knight of the Bald, we will be thanking these individual knights. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Michelle. You want to go ahead and say. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Gabe. Incredible before and after photos. And for that esteemed level of 10 years of service to the kingdom of St. Baldrick's, we welcome two new knights who we will thank individually. Thank you, Juan Carlos. And thank you, Brandon. For all of those knights who've been promoted and advancing in their knighthood to the kingdom of St. Baldrick, let it be known to all of these knights and knight commanders have earned the esteem and heartful gratitude of the entire kingdom of St. Baldrick's. All hail the League of Legendary Heroes and these new inductees. Thank you so much. I'm now happy to announce our next live shavies, and these are the teams of our physicians from UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, Oakland, who came here to get their head shaved. Dr. Hastings, would you like to interview some of our physicians? Yes. So um, I'd like to introduce the team captain for the Children's Hospital Oakland Physicians. This is Chris Blassus, and usually you come here with your little boys. I do. I usually do. Uh, I really love St. Baldrick's. It's a great day every year, a great event that is always put on, and I really appreciate the work you guys do, and we always have a blast. So we are a com we're adapting to this year, but we're also, <laughs> like you said, looking forward to next year and uh, hopefully being all back together. Yeah, and I, I think uh, one of the fun things that we showed a few years ago was you and your kids doing a really fun song. Yes. And I, you should tell us about that. You can even hum it while we're... Uh, yeah. <laughs> while we're... <laughs> oh, look, Anna's already started. Um, <laughs> I, uh, one of the things I do as a hobby outside of uh, medicine is that I like to write songs. And um, so I like to write songs about things that are important to me. And I, I really love St. Baldrick's and the work that is done. So I wrote a song about getting your head shaped for St. Baldrick's Day. And my son and I uh, sing it together every year. So... Um, yeah, we have a video from last year that we could that I could post somewhere for people to watch if they're Great, interested we'll in seeing it. Great, we'll post it on yeah. our site. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anu. Tell us about you've just been newly knighted. Ten years. Yeah, ten years goes by fast. So uh, I was a fellow when I first was able to shave, and then I've been fortunate to be able to shave every year since then. So um, for us, there's really. A, a lot of benefits <laughs> with St. Baldrick's, not only to be able to support pediatric cancer research across the United States, but directly to our institution. 
we've been able to get funds from St. Baldrick's to support our research programs for the last five years since 2016. That's really helped us grow <laughs> our, we call it our early phase program, which offers novel therapies or new therapies to kids who have limited treatment options. So that's been really, really a direct and important option for us. Uh, we've been able to restart a tumor bank, which has really been important for collaborative research. So uh, we've been very, very fortunate to have this event here and to have the direct support of St. Baldrick's. And um, as Caroline said, there's very limited opportunities for pediatric cancer research. And now with the uh, COVID situation too, we fear that there's gonna be less and less governmental funds and grants for pediatric cancer research. So St. Baldrick's has always been the most important fundraiser for pediatric cancer research. And I think going forward, it's gonna be even more so the case. And, and then as the nurses said, there's just the direct benefit for the patients and the bond that you have with them for, for be, being able to shave with them um, and to be bald together, as Chuck said, bald brothers uh, or <laughs> sisters. Um, I, I think they, they really appreciate not only how much we take care of them, but just the fact that we're willing to go these extra steps too to show how much we care about them and, and their outcomes. So it's, it's a really nice way to show how much we care about them. So I really appreciate being able to do this every year. You want to you wanna tell us who's shaving you? Yeah, this is my partner, Ghana. So I can <laughs> and you, and I recruited her, her to, do uh, <laughs> to, uh, to do the shave. So yeah, it makes it extra special this year. So, <laughs> Eddie, welcome back. You've joined us many years as well. Yes, thank you, Carolyn, for having this opportunity of uh, participating in St. Baldrick's. Uh, I'd like to thank Anu and Chris for always inviting me and putting me to the challenge. Uh, I really think this is a wonderful event. Uh, I'm a pediatric hospitalist and a primary care physician, so I don't work as directly as, say, Dr. Hastings or um, Dr. Agrawal, but uh, uh, this event allows us in the hospital and uh, in the community to really feel in solidarity with what's going on uh, with patients who have cancer in their families we are uh, often have patients and families in our thoughts as we're passing in the hallway or maybe seeing in follow-up care. And uh, I just really enjoy this event because it gives us a chance to say, hey, we're thinking about um, patients and families. Thank you. What do you think, Jesse? You're it's just so see. inspiring, not only having the nurses, but having our uh, physicians here who take care of our patients and families every day when they come to seek care and healing at the hospital. So thank you all on behalf of St. Baldrick and the community for everything that you do every day, and then going above and beyond of coming out here and shaving your head. The themes both between the nurses and what we hear the physicians is not only that solidarity, but making kids feel comfortable, especially those who may be going through intense cancer treatments and lose their hair. So thank you all for the years and years of service. I think we may have a special shavee, Caroline. Who's that? Dr. Long. Dr. Long. <laughs> do you, look at you, but what, how, how much hair do you have right now? <laughs> is that long for you? You can come show up over here. Dr. Yeah. Long is a very, very important part of our yeah. cancer program. Yeah. One of our highly regarded colleagues here at Children's Hospital in Oakland. So Dr. Long, what brought you out today to shave? <laughs> well, I, I, I needed my hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. I know, I'm in solidarity uh, 365 days a year because my hair is always short. Um, no, last night I um, was talking to Dr. Hastings on the phone about one of our patients. I do the pain service, um, so I'm, I'm very fortunate to work with oncology patients every single day with this incredible team. It's actually the best part of my job. Um, I work in the OR too, but there's nothing as uh, fulfilling for, for me, really, professionally, uh, than to work with these patients. Um, and so Dr. Hastings reminded me um, that this event was going on, and I, I just finished uh, seeing a number of patients, and I came down here, and uh, I, I would love to get a haircut. Well, <laughs> how inspiring that Dr. Long just got done seeing patients and came yeah. down here to support St. Baltrics. 
Also, this reminds me, it's not too late to contribute to St. Baldrick's and the UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital team for fundraising. So, doctor, so just like Dr. Long, it is still time that you have to help us uh, fundraise and get to that $100,000 goal that Dr. Hastings has challenged us all to. So now let's see uh, Dr. Long get shaved. I don't, think, I don't think you need too much. <laughs> I, I don't think there'll be a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm like, Chris, oh my goodness, Chris. How so, long were so, you throwing your hair? So let's look at one of these haircuts. <laughs> Last year? Since last year? Yeah. <laughs> Katera, maybe you should give Chris a mohawk in the middle of uh... <laughs> You know, it's those mohawk pictures that uh, go on all the St. Baldrick's websites. <laughs> Does anybody ever worry it won't grow back? <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. You don't mind? <laughs> Here. Yeah, you can go shorter. As you've got. Yeah. What, what number is that? Well, that's a one. We have a half. Half. We do. Yeah, go to the half. So, Dr. Hastings, <laughs> uh, um, why our physician team get shaved? Is there anything that you would like to share with the community that they may not know about childhood um, cancer? Well, I, as, a, as uh, Anu and I have both mentioned, there's been a lot of research done across the country and here as well. And it's very focused on, mm -hmm. on survivorship. And we want to bring more uh, research so that we can understand how and why children get cancer. I mean, that's frequently a question people ask. Why does a two-year-old get cancer? And that's a really good question. And we're doing a lot of research to investigate the impact of genetics and environment and, and other factors. And uh, I think this is going to be really important because in the future we want to look at not only treating and curing, but maybe preventing mm -hmm. cancer altogether. And another issue that we faced is something we've brought up briefly is that even though many children survive, and in fact 85% of children that are diagnosed today with cancer are expected to survive, but many survive still with long We need to address that because it's not only important to cure kids, but to ensure that we turn them out into the world to have great lives and long lives. So all of this work is really focused in many different aspects of, of care of kids. And we, we try to maintain that perspective every time we treat a child. You know, that's a powerful question, and I'm sure that mm -hmm. not only impacts the medical community, but parents of saying, why does a two-year-old get cancer? What is some of the research that uh, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland uh, has done? I think, uh, well, we've been very involved in, in many aspects of research, and one of, the, um, one of the wonderful things about pediatric cancer and being small is that we work collaboratively on a national basis, and, and St. Baldrick's is a major supporter of the Children's Oncology Group, and there are many clinical And so we actively participate in that, and we make sure that our patients have the opportunity to participate as well. Uh, additionally, Anu brought up a number of unique um, studies that we're doing here, really investigating new therapies, especially in children that have maybe recurred or had very difficult to treat cancers and are not responding to those therapies. We're looking at investigating new new options in multiple different types of cancers here. No, excellent. Thank you for providing that education. As uh, our uh, physicians start shaving up, I would like to introduce a very special foundation who's usually here in person, but due to the COVID-19 physical distancing, they can't be here. This is the Peter Pan Foundation. The Peter Pan Foundation is dedicated to inspiring children of all ages to reach their full potential by building confidence, okay. character, creativity through music and theater while instilling <laughs> the value of community outreach and philanthropy. They've always been a huge part of the St. Baldrick's Foundation uh, here at Oakland, and they put together a special video for all of us to enjoy and bring the child out in all of us. Hi friends, do you know who I am? That's right, I'm Peter Pan from the Peter Pan Foundation. 
The Peter Pan Foundation, or PPF, is a nonprofit organization located in Lafayette, which inspires philanthropy through the arts. That means we inspire others to use their talents to make a positive difference in the world and to help others. And we love helping Children's Hospital Oakland. Over the past 12 years, the PPF has raised over $200,000 for Cho. We've also made magic for thousands of wish kids, granted over 100 wishes for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, created programs for kids with special needs, and brought all-inclusive experiences to our participants and audience members. But one of our absolute favorite events to participate in is St. Baldrick's. This is our ninth consecutive year of bringing magic and music to this amazing event. We're so excited to be here today, and I'm inviting some very special guests to perform for you. Want to learn more about us? Well, you can go to peterpanfoundation.org or look us up on Instagram at, at ppfmagic. Okay, ready for some musical magic? Here we go! I've been staring at the edge of the water Long as I can remember Never really knowing why I wish I could be the perfect daughter But I come back to the water No matter how hard I try Every turn I take, every trail I track Every path I make, every world leads back To the place I know where I cannot go Where I long to be See the light as it shines on the sea It's blinding And no one knows How deep it goes And it seems like it's calling out to me So come find me And let me know Welcome back. Thank you, Peter Pan Foundation. They're an amazing group. They join us live every year, and hopefully will be back with us next year when we're back in person. So our final two in-person shavees, Jesse, you just joined us for the first year. You're MC, and we, and we got you here now. And, and you grew your hair out, is that correct? Yeah, I did grow my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> All How right. did you tell? <laughs> we're very pleased. And Sir Knight. Wow. But we didn't see what he looked like underneath his knight outfit, but here he is, and we are so pleased. And this is actually a whole family unit. Yes. And so we're really um, excited that all of you have joined us. And once you get bitten by the St. Baldrick's bug, 
you're here forever. So welcome aboard. Welcome to our family. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. All right. Have you ever had your head shaved in public? Uh, one. What? Really? <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, so it was two year, three years ago or two. Um, we went to the St. Baldrick's on Leprechaun's Day or St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> on Leprechaun's Day. <laughs> I got that from your um, tuxedo. <laughs> and my, me and my dad shaved our heads. And after that, we just went home. And she didn't want to shave her head. <laughs> well, we, we think that's OK. So Cyrus, why are you shaving your head today? I am shaving my head for research for kids with cancer. And so kids with cancer know that they are not alone. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. So typically at our event, we do have families. We have many kids that shave, whether it's their siblings or, um, or maybe relatives, or potentially they're shaving on behalf of somebody else in the family with cancer, whether or not they're a child. So I think for many people, it ends up being personally impactful. And then there are people that come because it's just, it feels personally meaningful to them as a way of expressing uh, how much they do really care and have hope for, um, for these people that are enduring difficult times, both the children and their families. So we're grateful too, again, for all of you who've done that at home. Many um, children, many women with long hair, I'm so, impressed. Um, not to say that it's not hard, Jesse, for you, maybe, <laughs> to part with your hair, but it, it, it's definitely something that is um, truly inspiring when we see, you know, young people uh, come and join us. So thank you, Cyrus, and we've, um, and I feel duly knighted as well, so I'm so impressed. So let the shaving begin. Let's see um, if we can do a new design on your head. Maybe this is a time to experiment. Just do the sides, maybe. See what it could, you know, you could leave here with the mohawk. You don't have to shave everything. What do you think? <laughs> How about you, Jesse, if you showed up at work with just a, a half a head shaved? I'm sure no? everybody will be fine with that. <laughs> right. Jesse, I see you're having, um, you, I just noticed when you're sitting down, you have very uh, interesting socks on, too. Yeah, they you match did, you my went, shirt. You went for the whole thing. Yeah. I'm wondering why we're shaving. I, we still haven't seen Michael's tattoo yet. Oh. And I know Michael's mom hasn't seen Michael's Michael, tattoo yet. Michael, come on, in the middle here. Michael, can you come on up and show everybody your tattoo? All right. And why okay. we look at it. Could you talk about it again? Absolutely. Yeah, so this... This tattoo is a, it's a representation of what we do at the hospital on 5 South here at Oakland Children's, which is we protect the young. We help them through a cancer diagnosis. Oh, mouth isn't working very well today. Through a cancer diagnosis, and uh, we, we take that journey with them. And, uh, and yeah, this is my embodied representation of that. And as we look at that tattoo, can you please walk us through the design one more time? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, in Irish mythology, there's this uh, god named Angus Og, or which translates to uh, uh, young Angus. And uh, he is the god of love, poetry, and the protector of the young. And uh, there's, a, there's a site in Ireland called uh, Newgrange, which is his uh, mythological home. And one of the entrance stones has all these motifs on it. So there's a uh, a couple different uh, spiral designs on here, um, with uh, which probably don't have Irish origin, but um, yeah. So this is a it's a rep representation of that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, and then you'll have to let us know what your mom thinks. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. So we should have brought some sunscreen. We thought it was going to be a very uh, cloudy day. But we got lucky, and it's uh, nice and warm. Oh, look at this. I think you haven't had hair off your head in a while. 
<laughs> it's always nice to see. You're doing a perfect job. Oh, so she shaves part of the head? She just clips a little bit? It was like my dad and I's hair before. It was like about two weeks ago when she um, gave us a haircut. And she's trying to compete against um, our original hair cutter, cutters. <laughs> it's the times where we can't go and get our uh, haircuts, so uh, when we've been having to do uh, haircuts at home. But there's no better place to get a haircut than here at uh, the St. Baldrick's Foundation at UCSF Benioff Children's uh, Hospital, Oakland. So we're very happy to do this as a family, to have uh, my wife, Katera, Cyrus, and myself uh, out here and uh, to be in solidarity with all of our patients, um, staff, and the community. And I know everybody at the hospital um, supports this event. And special thanks again to Carolyn and the whole team that is behind her to make this happen. Uh, you know, it's pretty incredible that despite all of the challenges that we've had with COVID-19 and the social distancing, that here at Children's Hospital Oakland underneath Carolyn's Caroline's leadership that we have been able to have this virtual event. So thank you again. You're welcome. And I just want to bring up that to date, we have shaved well over 2,000 heads in our event. Some a few times over, but that's a, that's a lot of shaving and a lot of hair. And many people who've had long hair have also donated their hair to children's uh, organizations to make wigs for our patients. I wanted to bring up that additionally on our website, and we'll be showing you a link as well, that we have an open raffle. And usually we're doing this live, but because of the situation, we're going to do it um, continued online. We have some amazing uh, raffle items, including a Bay Bridge uh, uh, sailing adventure with actually one of our nurses and a gourmet lunch provided by me. And it's actually a pretty fun day. We have a Tahoe vacation with a cabin for a family, which would be wonderful, and many other really fun items that were donated primarily from our community providers. So please take a look at that, and you can actually directly purchase tickets online. And we will be announcing the winners of that probably at the end of summer to allow for an open period to hopefully raise more funds. And again, all of this, the sponsorship for heads, the raffle sales, all go directly to uh, St. Baldrick's. So thank you uh, for that. Jesse, are you done? It looks like it. You tell right. me, Kurt. Yeah, <laughs> looks good. Looks good. Probably feels good today, too. No, uh, it feels great. Um, you know, as we start wrapping up uh, this event, I just want to thank everybody Who's, uh, who tuned in and live streamed this event. Also the people who came here, our nurses and doctors to shave um, their head and all those people and shavees who raised individual um, donations to support the St. Baldrick's and send in their photos. This event would not happen without all of you. And behalf, on behalf of St. Baldrick's and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland, thank you all for everything um, that you do. I'll turn it over to Carolyn for her final thoughts. So I'm, I, uh, I know we keep saying thank you over and over, and I think that this day requires a lot of preparation. We have an amazing team that works pretty hard all year to put this event together. We had to make a lot of last minute changes. I'm very grateful to Janie, who helped us from the foundation, really put together an amazing uh, program, truly, um, creative and inspirational, so, so thank you. And, um, you know, everybody's working really hard right now. Times have been changing, so it's hard to bring, to volunteer and do extra things, but this is what really inspires us and makes the days more meaningful. So we will continue. This is something that's going to be lifelong for us here. In addition to providing direct care for kids, we believe in the bigger picture and the bigger community. And so we'll continue to partner with this amazing organization. Thank you. And it's not too late to donate. Donate. Let's help get that challenge that was set to $100,000 uh, for this event. So thank you all so much.